It's been quite a year for films about World War II and Winston Churchill. Hard on the heels of Churchill, Brian Cox playing the PM at the time of D-Day, and Dunkirk, comes Joe Wright's Darkest Hour, which explores how Churchill became Prime Minister. Gary Oldman, under a ton of makeup, plays Churchill very effectively indeed, making much of the man's eccentricities, constant cigar, ever-present glass of whiskey, champagne and fried breakfast in bed. A scene in which his wife Clementine, Kristen Scott Thomas, complains that domestic bills have been left unpaid, seems to suggest that the great man was also prone to carelessness. The film, based on an original screenplay by Anthony McCartan, who previously scripted The Theory of Everything, begins in early May 1940. Hitler is studying maps of England, while Britain's ruling Conservative Party under ailing Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain, Ronald Pickup, are discussing a wartime coalition with Labour under Clement Attlee, but Labour insists that Chamberlain must resign. His obvious successor is Viscount Halifax, Stephen Delane, the Foreign Secretary, who shares Chamberlain's conviction that peace talks with Hitler must be entered into as soon as possible. This is a position Churchill, who through the 1930s has warned about the dangers of German rearmament, strongly opposes. King George VI, an electrifying Ben Mendelssohn, would prefer Halifax to succeed Chamberlain, and the film basically depicts how the King and the PM gradually come to respect one another. I believe we are to meet regularly. Once a week, I'm afraid. How is... How are you for Mondays? Uh, I shall endeavour to be available on Mondays. Four o'clock? I nap at four. Is that permissible? No, but necessary. I work late. Then perhaps lunchtime. Lunch? Meanwhile, the collapse of France, he's delusional, exclaims a French politician when Churchill demands that the defeated French mount a counterattack. And the resulting stranding of 300,000 British troops on the beaches at Dunkirk become the most pressing problem. A middle-of-the-night phone call by Churchill to President Roosevelt, the voice is that of David Strathairn, can't solve that crisis. Wright's film isn't exactly subtle. The story of those alarming days in May unfolds in very broad strokes, and some devices were used to similar, if not better, effect in Churchill. For example, the presence of an adoring but fearful new secretary, Lily James, employed to type Churchill's dictation, while worrying about a close relative who's fighting at the front. The worst example of this blunt approach comes in a wholly fictitious scene in which Churchill, unaccompanied by minders, takes a London tube train and chats to ordinary Londoners, asking them what they think of the situation. Armed with this street-level opinion poll, he is, according to this scenario, given the strength to face a mostly hostile cabinet and pursue his uncompromising policies. This sequence is simply not believable, and its presence in an otherwise intelligent screenplay is inexplicable. But Oldman is very fine, as Churchill, both in terms of voice and presence. Pickup's Dying Chamberlain is a surprisingly moving character, and whichever casting director thought of Ben Mendelssohn to play the king deserves some kind of special award because he's terrific. Darkest Hour may be brash, but it's never less than riveting when actors like these are doing their stuff. I'm giving it three and a half stars. 